All right, <clears throat> this is our third lecture. Uh, we're gonna talk about good kernels. Okay, so good kernels. The definition of good kernel is the family of kernels on a circle. It's a family of function. Okay, it's a family of function such that it satisfies three properties. First, for any n, it's integral divided by two pi is equal to one. Okay. And the second property is that it is bounded. Okay, there exists a bound such that for all of them we have this is a bound. And the third property is that for any delta greater than zero, so be careful of this bound. So this is basically among these regions, these two regions integral goes to zero as n goes to infinity so it's like something that peaks at the origin right you remember our first lecture we construct a family of trigonometric polynomials right and we consider a family where they're non-negative then we have a implies b okay if it if they're non-negative we can take off the negative sign which is right yeah, whatever, right? The A implies B. So here are some uh, pictures of good kernels. Okay, so this is that as a as a as a right. So these parts it gets like it, it gets to zero. Okay, so here's this is an example of convolution of a function with a kernel with a good kernel. Okay. So here leads to a theorem 4.1. It states that if we're given a family of good kernels and f is integrable function of circle, then we have this whenever f is continuous at x. So the limit, so this is like a pointwise convergence, right? We're given a function, a convolution, and a function at x as n goes to infinity it converges to fx, given that f is continuous. Well, if f is continuous on its domain, then the above limit is uniform. <laughs> right, so here are some notes by the author. It says that it is sometimes referred as an approximation to the identity, right, because, well, I was, we're approximating to fx, right, it's the approximation to the identity. And, okay. To prove this, we first use the f as continuous. Then we can pick a delta such that for any y less than delta, we have this as less than epsilon. Okay. Then we get the convolution, this difference, we just write out n minus fx and we bring this fx in. We bring this fx in. Because the length is 2 pi, so we can bring this in because we have a 2 pi above here so it does not hurt anything and we put up absolute values on both sides okay we just put absolute value on both sides and we can estimate we break the integral into two parts okay and after we break them up we use this inequality okay we use this inequality on both sides and now because we picked delta such that for this we have this, right? So here we have this is less than epsilon. And for here, we know that f is bounded, okay? Because <laughs> you're given that integrable function, then you're you should be bounded. You should be bounded, so each of them is less than b, so we use triangle inequality. Oh my god. Right? So this part is epsilon over 2 pi of this, and we can put this front by using triangle inequality, and we left here. Okay? So now, because this is bounded, right? Then this is non negative. And we have our second property of good kernels is that they are all bounded, right? 
So we have a bound. And we know that this can go to zero, right? So we can make n large enough such that this thing is less than epsilon. So we get this, which is a, so we can factor out epsilon with constant time epsilon for large n. Okay, so we have a convergence at each x. Now, if f is continuous everywhere, then it is uniformly continuous since you're two pi periodic, right? If it continues everywhere, then you're continuous on a compact set, then you're uniformly continuous. So, delta may be chosen independent of x, right? Because it is uniformly continuous, then we can this such that, um, you know, for any x, and for any y, the, we have this. And we can keep going down, down, down to here. This holds for any x. Which means uniformly convergence. Okay? So this proves our result. And recall that <coughs> the partial sum of Fourier series is the, F, is the convolution of f with the Dirichlet kernel. And here's a natural question. Is the Dirichlet kernel a good kernel? Like, if there are good kernels, then the last theorem will imply is that this goes to f uniformly for f continuous, which is the Fourier series converges to the function uniformly for f being continuous. But mathematically, we don't have them to be the good kernel. So here's the exercise from the book. So let the end denote the Dirichlet kernel and define L1 to be this. Okay, we prove this is greater than c log n, the word ln n, okay? The same thing. Well, for this, we know that b does not satisfy because this is unbounded. Right, this is unbounded. We don't have, we, sh we're, we need them to be bounded in order to be a good kernel, okay? So we prove this first. And so first, we consider the function x minus sine x on 0 to pi over 2. Then its derivative is greater than 0, which means that x is greater than sine x. So if we extend this, we put absolute value on, we have this, right? Which means that this is greater than 1. Which means that for theta and between negative pi and pi, the Dirichlet kernel is greater than 2 times this. Or, like, so I can bring a 2 in front, okay? So 2 times this, okay? Because we have theta over 2 here, right? So it's, so this is, like, you know what I'm saying, right? But as long as it's a constant, so it doesn't matter. <coughs> and now we have ln to be this, we just, con we just estimate this. So because there's an even function, so we just... We make this a zero and we cancel out a two. And this is greater than some constant times this, right? We have proven this one, yeah, here, right? And we change variables. That u equals to n plus one over two times theta. We change the variable and it yields this, which because this is not negative, so we make the bound a bit smaller, still bigger than this. And because, and we can just break them apart. Okay, we use telescoping on the integral signs. We use telescoping here. And now, because u is between k pi and k plus one pi. Okay, so it's greater than or equal to all the k plus one pi, okay? So, well, we do some arrangement, we give this, okay, so the sine u is left, and this thing is equal to a constant, so we can pull it out, and this thing is greater than some constant times log n, why? So log n is the integral of this, okay, and this sum is the upper sum of the function with the partition p, where p is this belong to partition 1 to n, okay, this is the upper sum, well, if you don't believe me, uh, if you have, okay, 
if it have one, one, two, three, four, n, and here's our like a function, right? It is decreasing, right? It is decreasing, so each part we're chosen is the soup, soup of this interval, soup of this interval, right? Soup of this interval times times one, right? Because the length of each subinterval is equal to one. So this is actually the upper sum. Well, then the inequality follows by the property of integrals. You're an upper sum, and this is defined to be the infimum of all upper sum, right? It's the definition of riemann stelges integral. So this proves our result. So we have ln squared to some constant times log n, which gives that it is unbounded. Okay, so this concludes this little short lecture. Okay, I'll see you guys next time.